Most Minecrafters know that items stack from 1 to 64. Some items stack from 1 to 16, and other items don't stack at all. Now what most people don't know is that items can stack negatively. These negative stacks are weird. At first glance they seem limitless, but upon relog, the stack size will reset. To explain this stack size reset, we're going to have to go deeper into the world of binary and signed bytes. Firstly, let's look at the basics of binary and how it relates to the decimal that we're all used to. In decimal, we have digits, and each digit can have one of ten states. They can either be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. When we add 1 to the maximum state 9, we get 10, or 1, 0. In binary, we have bits, and each bit can have one of two states. They can either have a 0 or a 1. When we add 1 to the maximum state 1, we get 1, 0, just like we did in the decimal system. Like in decimal, when adding two numbers, A and B, in binary, we start with the least significant bits first, then we proceed onto the more and more significant bits. The rules of addition in binary are the following. 00 plus 00 equals 00. 00 plus 01 equals 01 plus 00 equals 01. And 01 plus 01 equals 10. By following these rules, we can count in binary by starting with 0000, 0, 0, 0 and adding 1 each step of the way. We add small compound numbers like this. We start with the least significant bit, 1 plus 1 equals 1, 0. Then we add this to the original sum. Then we shift our attention to the next least significant bit. 1 plus 1 equals 1, 0. And we add this onto the original sum. Finally, we shift our attention to the next least significant bit. 0 plus 1 equals 1, giving us the final solution, 1, 0, 0. We can then add larger numbers as follows. Now, when subtracting two numbers, we normally use a different representation for the numbers. This alternative representation is called 2's complement. To explain 2's complement, we are first going to look at the decimal equivalent of 2's complement, 9's complement. Imagine we were to say that 8 is equal to minus 1, given that whenever we add it to a number, say 1 plus minus 1, we must add another 1 and ignore the leading digit of our final answer. But how does this make any sense? To understand better, let's look at an example. 1 plus minus 1 equals 1 plus 8 plus the extra 1 which would equal 1, 0. Then if we ignore the leading digit, we get 0. Okay, so this works, but where does it come from? This all comes from 9's complement. In tabular form, 9's complement looks like this. So when subtracting one number from another, say, 15 minus 4. We first look in our table and replace all the negative decimal numbers with 9's complement representation. So in this case, we get 15 plus 95. This equals 110. But don't forget to add that extra 1. 110 
plus the extra one is 111. Finally, we ignore the leading term and we get 11. And as we can see through inspection and our own experience, this is the correct answer since 15 minus 4 is equal to 11. Now the most important thing to remember about this system is that it implies negative numbers are represented by positive numbers. And the expression 1 plus 9 could mean two different things. It could mean 1 plus 9 in the decimal domain or 1 plus minus 1. Each have two different values, 10 and 0. Computers use this system for subtraction and therefore the computer needs a way of knowing which numbers are positive and which numbers are negative. The way we do this is quite simple. We just split the total numbers we have in half. Half will represent the positive numbers and the other half will represent the negative numbers. So in decimal, this would be like the following. With the decimal numbers on this side and the nines complement representation of these negative and positive numbers on the right. So let's start with a little example. What is 4 minus 5? Well firstly we need to convert the decimal numbers into the representation numbers. So we look in the table, we look up 4 in the decimal and the representation of that is 4. Then we look again in the decimal and see that the representation of minus 5 is plus 5. So then we do 4 plus 5 which equals 9. Then we convert backwards from the representation to the decimal. And as we can see 9 is equal to minus 1. But what about 9 minus 6? Well, if we look up 9 in the decimal, it's not in the table, and neither is minus 6. It only stops at minus 5. So what can we do? Well, we can use combinations of numbers that are already in the table, and then use those and add them all up to do our sums. So we can say 9 is 3 plus 3 plus 3, and minus 6 is minus 3 plus minus 3. Therefore, 9 minus 6 is equal to 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus minus 3 plus minus 3. Then we use the table once again to convert the decimal numbers into the representation. So we look up 3 in the table and we see that 3 plus 3 plus 3 is equal to 3 plus 3 plus 3. But then we look up minus 3 in the table and we see that minus 3 plus minus 3 is equal to 7 plus 7. This in total is 9 plus 14, which is 23. Now we ignore the leading digit here, which in our case is 2, and so we're left with 3 in the representation. Then we go back from the representation to the decimal and we can see that 3 in the representation is equal to 3 in the decimal. So the answer to 9 minus 6 is equal 3. Finally, let's do the example 5 minus 8. Well, 5 is 3 plus 2, and minus 8 is minus 4 plus minus 4. So again, we look in the decimal table and we see that 3 and 2 are both 3 and 2 in the representation. So we know that 5 is going to be constant in the representation. Now we look at minus 4 plus minus 4. Now minus 4 is equal to 6 in the representation. And therefore we have minus 4 plus minus 4 is 6 plus 6 in the representation. So now we have 3 plus 2 plus 6 plus 6, which is equal to 17. We ignore the leading digit, which leaves us with 7 in the representation. So now we're going to convert from the representation to the decimal. And as we can see, 7 in the representation is minus 3 in the decimal. So 5 minus 8 equals minus 3. 
Of course, in computers, we use binary mathematics, and therefore we use 2's complement instead of 9's complement. But the entire method is exactly the same. But what does this have to do with Minecraft's item stacking? Let me guess, absolutely nothing! Not today. The number of items in a stack is saved in a signed byte. A signed byte is comprised of 8 bits of memory. It can represent integers between 127 and minus 128. When the number of items in the stack exceeds 127, the integer overflows and becomes negative. When the number of items in the stack subseeds minus 128, the integer underflows back to the positive domain. But all of this happens only if you relog, because it's only when you relog that the number of items are saved into the signed byte. To understand these overflows better, we are going to have to introduce the concept of finite fields. But I'm afraid that's all I have time for in this video, so join me next time when we'll further our understanding of negative stacking and finite fields in Minecraft. <laughs>